Today, I'm going to show you the top five mistakes that I see colorists make when they are working in a color managed project. When you know these mistakes, when you can identify them, when you start to get more comfortable with color management, it's going to increase your confidence as a colorist. It's going to increase the quality of the work that you're able to do, the speed with which you're able to do it, and ultimately allow you to offer better value to your projects and to your clients. So let's dive into my top five color management mistakes. Number one, biggest color management mistake that I see uh, people make when they are working with color management, maybe for the first time or they're still very new to it, waiting until you've already begun grading. So take a look at the image that I'm currently on here. We're currently in a log state on this image. I haven't uh, turned my color management on for this shot quite yet. And if you're like me and you're looking at a fresh timeline of ungraded material, it's very tempting to get in there and start color grading, isn't it? Because that's what we're here to do is to color grade. And we look at the image, we go, ooh, okay, let's get in there. Let's add some contrast to the image. Maybe adjust our pivot like so. Maybe we'll go in and we'll add some saturation to the image. Maybe we'll go into our shadows and start to cool things off a little bit. Maybe we'll go into our highlights and start to warm them up. And you start to have fun. You start to play around with the image. And then you go, oh, wait, Cullen told me that I'm going to make things look even better if I use color management. And Cullen told me that I'm going to be able to get faster results if I use color management. I better go in and do that now, right? Now, I've already set up my color management here at the project level of uh, my, or at this project settings level uh, of this uh, project here. And if you want to know how I've done that, we've got lots of other videos here on the channel to walk you through it. But for now, I'm just going to turn those settings back on, which I've had bypassed, okay? Now, watch what happens when I unbypass my color management, when I turn it back on. It doesn't marry with the grading that I've done at all because I didn't have this viewing context when I was making these grading decisions, did I? So this is now doing nothing that I want to see happen to this image. And I really just need to reset at this point and rework my grade in this new context of my color management. So waiting until you've already begun grading to drop in your color management, it's really just a waste of time because when you do turn on that color management, your results are not going to look like they did before. Your decisions are not going to hold up and you're going to have to go back to zero anyway. So you might as well lay that foundation, get it in place at the very beginning so that you don't have to waste any time or then try to figure out, wait, how do I get exactly what I was getting before, but inside of my color management, now you're in a tail chasing technical exercise that's really no fun. So you want to set up that color management right at the beginning and then make your grading decisions with that full context available to you. Okay, that's number one, waiting until you've already begun grading. Number two, this is one that comes up all the time, especially if you are newer to working in a color managed workflow. Giving up. You start working color managed, you hear Cullen or you hear other people talking about why color management uh, can be beneficial and all the things that it can offer to you as a colorist. And you say, cool, let me give that a try. And then you try it out and you're like, gosh, this is confusing flipping all these settings, but you kind of forced your way through it. And then you start grading and you're like, this doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel familiar. It doesn't feel intuitive. I've got clients asking me for things and it's taking me longer to make them happen than it does when I'm working in my good old familiar workflow. And at some point you say, I'm giving up. I'm going back to what I know. I got work to do. I got stuff to accomplish. I can't be messing around with this, right? Well, that's great if you don't want to work color managed. If you want to work color managed, I really want to encourage you to stick with it. Put in some practice when you're not in the hot seat and under pressure to deliver great work in a hurry. Because I promise you, if you put in a little bit of practice, you get time to familiarize yourself with color management, you're not going to want to go back. You're going to find that you can get better results more quickly inside of a color managed workflow. But you do need to put in that time and you do need to be patient. Because if you give up, then of course you are not going to succeed in working within a color managed workflow. So that's number two. Giving up is of course uh, maybe another one of the biggest mistakes that you can make when you're color managing because you're never going to learn anything that way. And if you keep saying, this is the one where I'm going to try it, and then 5, 10, 20% of the way through your project, you end up giving up, you're just going to be stuck in between these two ways of working and really getting the worst of both worlds. So find a way to get enough practice in so that you can feel confident, feel comfortable with color management when it comes time to actually do a color grade using a color managed approach. Okay, that's number two. Number three, this is one that I see a lot as well. Let's say you're bought into all of the uh, value props that I uh, 
uh, make when we're talking about color management here on the channel. You say, you know what, that makes sense. And when you show me the benefits of color management versus working in a more traditional way, I can really see the value there and I'm going to do it. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do it. And then you go, well, what about adding in a creative look? What if I want to use one of my film LUTs, for example? So you go in, maybe you go over to your timeline level of your node graph where you can apply an adjustment that's going to affect all the shots in your timeline. And you say, hey, I've always gotten really good results out of this Kodak uh, 2383 LUT that ships with Resolve here. Let's throw this on and see what it looks like. And you throw it on and you're like, yeah, that doesn't look great, does it? But maybe it's just higher contrast footage. Maybe I just need to adjust in order to get the LUT to do what I want. And so you go in and maybe you back off your key output gain a little bit. Maybe you work upstream with the LUT and you open up your lift and you drop your gain. And you do kind of what I would call brute forcing the LUT so that it is producing a reasonable image for you. This is another really big mistake when you're working color managed. When you are working color managed, the LUTs that are going to work for you, the LUTs that you need to use are different than the LUTs that you might use if you weren't working color managed. And by doing this, by brute forcing a LUT, which was not designed to work in the way that you are using it, you're basically doing the same thing as not color managing at all. You're really neutralizing whatever benefits you might be getting from color management by dropping a LUT into the pipeline that's breaking the pipeline. You no longer have a sound technical foundation, which is the whole premise of color management. So by doing this, you're really negating a lot of the value of working color managed. And uh, ultimately you're just creating more work for yourself and you're gonna find that uh, you are not as efficient. You get weird artifacts and clipping and other problematic issues that arise in certain shots. And the truth is you're gonna be better off skipping the color management altogether. So rather than going with a legacy LUT like the one that we are looking at today, or with any old LUT that you've seen work well for you in the past, you need to now be a little more choosy and look for LUTs that are designed to work within a color managed pipeline. Great example of this would be my uh, free film looks LUTs that I offer to you guys. I'll leave links to those in the description for today's video. So here's my PFE subfolder within my CKC folder. I've got a Fuji 3510. I've got a Kodak 2383, both great options if you uh, want to have LUTs that are properly built for a color managed workflow like this one. And I also have my Voyager LUTs, which I'm going to go with here today. I'm going to go with Arcturus from my Essentials Pack and use this to impart my overall creative look onto the image. Okay, but that's another big mistake that I see out there a lot is trying to brute force your old faithful LUTs and uh, trying to make them work for you when they really aren't designed to work for you in a color managed context. Okay, here's another big one that I see. This kind of also relates to these film looks LUTs that we were just talking about. Let's go ahead and bypass our color management for a second. And I'm gonna turn this off, uh, this uh, look LUT that is. And we're gonna look at kind of like another form of color management that I see out there a lot. I'm gonna call this semi color management. Let's go once again back to that film looks folder and we're going to take a workflow that I see out there a lot where we go, well, I've got some log footage here. And I heard that this Kodak 2383 uh, LUT inside of the film looks folder is designed to expect log and it's designed to expect rec seven or, or to return rec seven or nine, as I see in the uh, name of the LUT. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to grade underneath this. Now I want to be clear in broadest strokes, what this is doing, if I apply this LUT and I grade underneath it, in very broad strokes, this is a form of color management. You are taking a log image, feeding it into a LUT that expects log, and that uh, LUT is returning Rec. 7 or 9. So the LUT is effectively providing your technical color management as well as a creative look for you, and you are grading underneath. So what's so wrong with that? What's the problem with that? Well, when it comes to color management, the devil is in the details. There are lots of different log curves. There are lots of different color spaces and treating them all as if they are interchangeable is going to produce lots and lots of problems and compromises for you in your color grade. You can even see it here in this image. Again, I could grade through the problem that I'm seeing here, but I've got a problem. My exposure is under, right? My colors are feeling kind of flat, so I'm going to have to go in there and juice my colors up. These are compensations that if you feel yourself having to make, it's a really good indicator that there's something that is not optimized in your workflow. And in this case, what's not optimized is I have a particular camera log format that this Rec. 709 Kodak LUT 
has no knowledge of. This Rec. 709 Kodak LUT is actually expecting a film log, which is a different kind of log than the camera log that I'm working with here today. So using this sort of semi-color managed approach, whether you're talking about using a film looks LUT or maybe the very popular uh, Airy Log C to Rec. 709 LUT and saying, hey, it's a log to Rec. 709 LUT. I need to go from log to Rec. 709 and I've seen this LUT produce good results in the past. So I'm gonna apply that at the end of my chain and grade underneath it. And in doing so, get a kind of simple form of color management. It's another huge mistake that I see when it comes to color management because the devil is in the details, as I said. So you need to make sure that you are ideally working with full color management inside of Resolve. But if not, if you do wanna work underneath one or more LUTs, you need to make sure that you are feeding those LUTs exactly what they expect and that what you are getting back from those LUTs is exactly what you want. Otherwise, you are making little subtle mistakes that can stack up, add to the amount of time that it takes you to uh, get your grade on its feet, and then uh, cause you to run out of time where you would ideally be making more finessed adjustments and value adds to the image. So don't semi-color manage. If you're going to color manage, go all the way. And even if you want to do that with a LUT, if you want to use, for example, the Airy Alexa Log C to Rec. 7 or 9 LUT, make sure that you are inputting Airy Alexa Log C material and not simply saying, well, this is log and that wants log and that's good enough. You're going to end up creating more work for yourself and creating the need for compensations. All right. So don't fall into that pitfall of what I call semi-color managing. If you're going to color manage, make sure you do it. Make sure you get your details straight. Those details are really where the power of color management lies because it allows you to get a really, really strong foundation on top of which you can make your creative grading decisions and get better looking images more quickly. So I hope that roundup of those top five mistakes is helpful to you, not only in identifying mistakes you might be making today, but maybe you've never even made any of these mistakes before, simply by being empowered with the knowledge of where we can go wrong, where our misunderstanding can sneak into the process, you're gonna be more confident in your work as a colorist and in your ability to deliver excellent results as a colorist when you are working in a color-managed workflow.